Welcome to the Introduction to Humio video series. This is the fifth in a series of seven videos aimed at introducing you to Humio log management. In the previous video, we learned how to search our data using the Humio query language. As a next step, we may wish to share insights that we've learned with others. This is what Humio dashboards are all about. But first, let's look at a related topic, data enrichment. As we dive deeper into our data, we may find that we can make it more useful by enriching it with data from other sources. A common use case is to enrich status or error codes with human-friendly descriptions. Codes are good for logging and reference, but humans sometimes require more verbose descriptions. In the demo portion of this video, we will look at matching HTTP status codes with their descriptions, courtesy of data from the World Wide Web Consortium, or the W3C. To enrich or augment our data, Humio has just the right query function for the job. It's called Match. Match allows you to point Humio to an uploaded CSV or JSON file, tell it the relevant fields to match, and what columns from the file you wish to include in the query. On to Humio dashboards. For sharing data insights with others, Humio has powerful dashboarding capabilities. Dashboards accompany Humio repositories and views. They are typically based off of often used searches where graphs and tables of relevant data are shared with others. Dashboards are composed of dashboard widgets, which we will discuss in detail in the next slide. Once you have a dashboard that you are satisfied with, you can share a read-only version using a Humio-provided URL that contains a special access token. Present your data in a variety of ways, Humio dashboard widgets can be grouped together to comprise a dashboard. Bar chart and pie chart typically visualize the results from Humio query functions grouped by and top. Unlike pie charts, bar charts can be used to show the results of multiple aggregates. Next is the event list widget. Sometimes events, the way they show up in the Humio user interface, are useful in dashboards. The gauge widget displays a single number and is useful for displaying things like the number of errors per day or the number of active connections to a given system. Gauge is typically used with Humio query functions, sum, average, or count. The sand key widget can render results from a two-level sand key diagram. It is good as displaying flows from between entities, such as network flows from one IP address to the next. The table widget displays data in rows and columns. The time chart widget is the most commonly used widget in Humio. It displays bucketed time series data on a timeline. And last, the world map widget displays geographical data on a world map. Different map projections are supported, such as standard Mercator and orthographic projections. Here is a collage of the sand key, time chart, and world map widgets just to give you an idea of what they look like. At Humio, we drink our own champagne. Here is an example of Humio dashboards used to monitor Humio. Let's look at a demo of Humio dashboards starting with data enrichment. To set this up, I am using the sample data that comes with the Humio in-app tutorial. First, let's enrich our data. To do that, we will use the CSV file of status codes and matching descriptions downloaded from the W3C. I should point out that these descriptions are very brief, but more than enough to show off the functionality. To upload the file, go to the Files menu in the Humio menu bar. Then click on New File and either create a new file or upload an existing one. In this scenario, we will match the code column with the already ingested status code to enrich our web blog data with the status text column. Now we will use the match function to match status codes to status text. We simply specify the file the field that we have already ingested, and I'll show that field now, status code, and notice status text has not been added yet. We'll match that with a column of code from the file and include 
the status text. After running the match function, it has given us a new field called status text. Now we will run the group by function to create a table for our widget. There are two ways to create dashboards in Humio. One is through the dashboards menu item and add it here. The other is to use the save as function and save it as a dashboard widget and create it upon creation of your first widget. We will do the latter. So we'll call our website, our dashboard name, website perf performance. And give the widgets widget name of status code. For our next widget, we will look at errors related to our product page. I'll change the time window for aesthetics. And then, using our settings panel here, I will change the area to stack. And now we can add this to the widget as well. Choose our existing dashboard with a new widget. And this will be error on the product page. For a third widget, we will look at the various methods and see which are the top ones via the sort function. We'll create a bar chart from this, or a pie chart, let's make it a bar chart, and then add that as well. Now we can use our edit function to arrange our dashboard the way we want it. So I will move the bar chart up here. I'll align these two. Make this a little wider. And then widen this one as well. Another feature is to be able to show the queries right here in the dashboards by this toggle. I'll save that as my layout. Once I got my dashboard finalized, I can actually use it and share it with others via this shared URL. So I'll call this website. Web link. Create the link, and then now I can have a copy taken from here and show just the website. Once I have this, I can copy the link and show it in a brand new browser. As well. We look forward to seeing how you use Humio dashboards to share your insights with your associates and colleagues. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.